Take a breather. All right. Heavy topic. Big topic. Topic that probably more than half of the world can relate to, right? We're going to talk about baby mama, baby daddy drama, right? I've experienced it. Some of you may have experienced it. We're going to talk about it. And more so on a more different perspective because we're living in a day and time that drama is so encouraged because it entertains. And the whole time we're dragging the children in the midst of it. It's not fair to them. We have to take a seat back and realize, you know what? If God thought enough of me to give me this child or children, I need to do my part to the best of my ability. And I need to please him in all my ways through raising my children. That's number one. Seek God for all understanding and all guidance. Secondly, um, there is a lot of things that can potentially send us to hell faster than the average Joe. And we have to understand the whole baby mama, baby daddy concept includes a lot of mess. A lot of filth, a lot of dirt, a lot of things that when compound on our shoulders, it can mean a difference of looking like mud or a clean white t-shirt. Get what I'm saying to you? When, I mean, think about it, even some, the mentioning of maybe the father or the mother of your child makes you so angry and so upset and so irritated and strikes that nerve in you. You have literally just started the process to sin the bible said be angry but sin not so it's not a matter of just feeling angry that's the sin right it's what comes after the fact the next sentence the next words the next thought process the next action that's when it becomes a problem and before you know it you're acting out of character you're taking out on people who have nothing to do with it. The children are watching. The children are hurt. The, the children are frustrated. They don't understand. And their mentality is corrupted. Why? Because their example is given a bad one. You get what I'm saying? So we have to be careful. And like I said, God gave me this like a while ago. And I just been sitting there like, Lord, out of all people, why are you giving it to me? Now, I'm, let me put this out there. I'm not the run and go chase after the father of my child put up a negative style. I, that's not me at all because I believe that your fruits will show. Meaning that whatever you are and whatever you do in that moment, it's going to be very evident of who you are and who I am. That's all. I don't need to prove how great of a mother I am. I don't have to put a uh, 160 characters on social media saying i'm a good mom i do this i do that i know without a shadow of a doubt what i do and i know what i don't do so i have no need to put no one else down to uplift me and again we have to be careful because these actions these thoughts this process can literally lead you astray from christ and into the devil's traps and schemes we have to be careful Stop letting somebody upset you. Stop letting the mention of their name offend you. Just stop. Mature in the Lord. Say, you know what? I'm me. And I'm going to do my task and my duty in the best fit and eye of the Lord. And I'm not going to let anything or anyone affect that. And some, and I will say this, some situations and scenarios that I seen or heard about, I'm like, wow. Almost fleshly i'm like wow you have a justification to act the way you do towards that person but i can't say that and i shouldn't say that even those um what do you call it those um influencers not influencers those encouragers when the person makes a status about how they hate their baby daddy and then the person i know that's right girl or i know that, that you know those supporters of the negativity 
they are not your friends. For me, I would like for somebody to have enough maturity in Christ that if I go to put a status up like that, somebody come, hey, you need to take that down. And yes, you want to get mad. And yes, it's going to hurt your feelings because you're thinking, no, I need to let this out. I'm hurt. But at the end of the day, what does it do besides have people saying, oh, I wonder who that baby daddy is. Ooh, I, I, all it does is give them an extra friend request. That's not benefiting the child, you or them. We literally have to mature. And aside from, because a lot of you going to say, hey, I ain't all into that Christ stuff and reading it. Hey, even if you ain't on that side of the thing, you need to be at least on a mature side where you can say, hey, I'm grown enough, I'm mature enough, and I deserve to be represented by an image other than the one I'm portraying. And by all means, it used to be a kind of lopsided thing where the women tend to make the statuses and talk the smack and, you know, raise cane on social media. But now that thing is slowly becoming balanced where you have just as many women getting on social media as men to downcast and create a thought process or corrupt mentality about the other person. And that's what it comes down to. It's like, okay, I feel a way about this person. This person has hurt me. I want you to feel that way too. And I want to badmouth them. But is that Christ-like? Is that, does that glorify God at all? No. My whole thing is short, simple, and sweet to the point. If this person is making you mad because they aren't taking care of the child, they aren't participating financially, they haven't bought clothing, diapers, or whatever the case, you know what you need to do? File for child support. It's that simple. If the person has an issue with not picking up the kids, not spending time with the kids, if you truly think that that person is decent enough to be in your child's life, go do a custody situation. Go do the custody paperwork. It's that simple. Or and I would even say in this case, you have to be careful with that too because I've seen a lot of women get on Facebook and say, um, if, my, if the father of my child will call right now, I'm going to send my child packing. The person who did you wrong, disrespected you, has not done anything for your child, you think because a phone call is coming in that it's okay to send that child over there? We have to be smarter than that. We have to understand who we're dealing with. Now, in some cases, you can be mature enough to say, you know what? The differences was strictly emotional. That's fine. That's normal, right? That's how it's supposed to be. Because that's what it is most of the time. But if you know that the relationship was abusive, the person is in gangs or doing drugs, smoking alcohol, whatever the case, and not really an ideal picture for the child to be around, then that statement makes no sense at all. In my opinion, that means you're just as a corrupt parent as them because you can't make a sound decision either. They may can't act correctly, but you can't make sound decisions for the best interest of your child. That's my opinion. And like I said, there's a lot of in-between, a lot of gray area that has to be figured out. But I say that to say this, use common sense, have knowledge and understanding of who you're dealing with, what you're dealing with. Understand that very well, the person that was a boyfriend, girlfriend to you is not necessarily the person that's the same mother and father to that child. There is a difference, big difference. But a lot of times the lines cross because, hey, when you are my boyfriend and girlfriend, you are fine. But now that you're not my boyfriend, and girlfriend, or husband, and wife, you're not good enough for my child either. You have to learn to put differences aside and say, okay, what is for the best interest of my child? That simple. Not what's make good make sense to you, what looks good to you. Use your authority to do the greater good for your child in the family than to portray that you're better than somebody else on social media or whatever the case may be because that gets you nowhere. And we have to remember that God watches us and he sees all and he knows all. So it's not enough to say, okay, this is my battle and I'm going to take put my hands all over it because we know we don't know what to do. We often fall and we often is misled by our emotion as I stated before. So I would say, do not let the mother or father of a child cause you to be on the wide path of unrighteousness and sin and corruption. Get on the straight and narrow. 
handle your business as adult light as possible and do everything in love and watch God work out in your favor. Trust me. I'm a believer. I'm telling you. And I am a testimony to the fact that you don't have to hoop and holler. You don't have to make a scene. You don't have to bad mouth. You don't have to do none of that. Talk to your God today and ask him, Lord, what is, what is it with me and how can I make a difference in this situation? And in some cases, that just may be your thorn, right? The thing that doesn't go nowhere that you got to deal with for the rest of your life, but you handle that thorn with grace. You handle that thorn with love and appreciation that God thought enough of me that I could handle this. So let me handle this. Don't let a situation take advantage of you. Don't let a situation bring you to anger. Don't let a situation... Uh, cause you to act so horribly out of your character that now you're a judge because there's two type of artisans right the one that sways where the numbers are meaning the most lights the most conversation the most gossip and then there's those who support what their what is feeding their flesh no matter what so you can always have those that okay yeah i know that situation i know that baby daddy baby mama situation so i'm all for it mm. then you got the ones that's Oh, did you see how many comments was on his or how many likes was on hers or how many mad faces and who screenshot? You got those type of people. But I'm telling you, they both messy and they both mean you no harm. Like, it's been plenty of times. Those of you that I know personally that I know better of, I want to comment so bad and say, man, no. But I even say this. You got to be careful with the one that thinks it's okay for them to come and be the mature one and kind of put a wrench in the whole party the one that says take this down you know better than this you got to be careful with that too because you don't want to be the cause of anger or frustration if you know this person enough inbox this person if you know this person enough call them talk to them privately and say you know what let me talk to you about what happened today or if anything be ears first then the mouthpiece because a lot of time people just want to vent which is why, because I used to judge people so bad they get on social media and rant about their issues and their problems and situations. But I know personally that, man, sometimes when it gets so heavy and it gets so hard, you're like, man, somebody going to listen to me. Well, there's just a stranger on Facebook. And studies have shown that lights, the hearts, those raise a type of hormonal satisfaction in you that it literally can cause depression when you don't see them. And I've seen or heard it before. Like a lot of people, like their picture... Let's say they post a picture 10 minutes ago. If they don't have at least 10 likes, they're deleting it. Because they feel like they haven't, they weren't good enough. That they did not meet the mark of social media. And I think that is so sad. Because whether somebody else likes you or what you're doing, you like it. You love it. Not saying, now, I do, me personally, I don't go and like my own stuff. But I'm saying you and your heart like it. So you know what? I thought this picture was good enough for y'all to see then be confident in that. But also moderation, like, that's something I had to deal with too. I used to post pictures every day, all day, and it was too much. Even now I struggle because I have kids, and it's like, okay, I want y'all to see how they look today, or da 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 da, -da but God keeps saying, you know what, chill out. Chill out. Everything in moderation. But again, this is to mothers and fathers. And even this term, baby mama, baby daddy, I use that because it's known and it catches like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Somebody's talking about some, their baby mama, their baby daddy. Like, that's literally how people are. But I say in my own personal life, I say my, do my daughter's dad. It's that simple. And because I'm still married to my son's father, I just say his name. Or I say, go to your daddy. Like, it's no need for the name calling and this, that, and the third. Because you have to answer to God for what you say and what you do. Just as much as they have to answer to God for what they say and do. And I think we tend to forget that we think we have to take matters in our, in our own hands. Only in the process of law. Meaning that if it's something that's causing harm danger to you or your child then you take then you take the necessary stuff you pray all the way to the court to the police but stuff something as simple as you didn't think they gave you enough money this week keep that to yourself 
Have enough respect for yourself to say, you know what? He didn't do. She didn't do. I'm going to do. And if, again, if you have troubles, because I'm not going to sit here and say that I have a problem with child support because I do not. If the person has failed to neglect their responsibility and duties, then they need to be held accountable. And the court has done a very decent job in the majority because there are some situations I heard and I'm just like, wow, that's not fair. But that's what happens when two adults can't handle it themselves. The responsibility falls in the lap of the court. But I will say for anybody who's dealing or struggling, handle it as much as you possibly can without involving yourself with court. And then if it has to get to that, then you'll know, you'll know when it's time. But I, like I said, handle everything with love and grace and let God fight your battles. Don't sit there and stand on the battlefield with, about something that has that is bigger than you in most cases. Because understand, if we weren't smart enough to make the decision not to deal with that person in the first place, like before there was a child and we were in a relationship with them. Because most of the time, people show their true self during dating. And we tend to either to ignore it or we think we can change them. But... Put your big girl drawers on or put your big box of shorts on and say, you know what? I made a mistake. I'll make sure it won't happen again. Now I'm going to handle my business with grace. And I hope I said something that I hope you don't get mad because we all been in that immature state where we're like, you know what? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know my situation. Doesn't matter. I know God and I know what God can handle. And like I say, I can testify on my own. That if you give it to God, he'll handle it. Take your hands off of it. Look up. Do your part and keep pressing. Don't worry about who's there. I'm sorry, who's not there. Who's doing, who's not doing so much. You make sure you handle your business. And you make sure you take it to God. And of course, I love you guys. And I, I pray for more marriages in the future. For everyone I know. I pray that... You don't let the whole baby mama, baby daddy drama um, offend you. You don't let it stop your shine. You don't let it take your joy. Because like I said, that thing, the devil has used that thing to disrupt homes, to hurt, to damage, to break people's hearts and feelings, to manipulate. It has been used for such horrible things and none of those things are of God. And we want to look for those things that bring us to God, not from him. Don't let no person on this earth do that. And like I said, this message is specifically for the baby mamas and baby daddies. Don't let your baby mama take you from the will of God and doing what you need to do for your child. Don't let the baby fathers take you away from doing what you need to do for your child and doing the will of God for your life. I love y'all and I'm praying for y'all. God bless. We should take a slow Oh, oh, with just ordinary people.